Ear training is a hot topic amongst piano players because we all want to have trained ears. We want to hear the things and play the things. So this lesson is all about how to train your ear. I'm going to try to keep it to 10 minutes or less. We'll see what happens. But the idea is that we can begin training our ears right away. That's one of the first things you can start working on when you learn to play the piano. And the way you can do this is by learning your intervals. Interval or intervals refer to the space between two notes. So from here to here. That's an interval. From here to here is an interval. And songs are made of melodies which are created using intervals. So if you can learn to hear two different notes and identify the space between them, you can play them on the piano and then you can hear a song and play a song. So let's begin. We're gonna use C as our home base for this. It's just nice and simple. The space from C to D, that's a second. Ugh. When you play them at the same time, they sound really crunchy, but Basically, it's the distance between one note to the next note. If you really wanted to get theoretical, it's a, it's a whole step apart. We're looking at major intervals today, just to keep it simple. It's a beginner lesson. So from C to D is a second. Melodies that sound or use this might be happy birthday, right? So when you hear or you want to identify a second, you can just think happy birth, that's the second. Another one that works for seconds is Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a, right? Mary. It's moving down in seconds. Mary had. So when you're trying to practice this, to put this into actual practice, a great way to do it is to play a note anywhere on the piano. And then try to, try to sing a song from there. So a major second, happy birthday. Happy birth. Boom. That's a major second above A. I could play this note. Mm, I'll close my eyes. That's really high. Play it down here. <laughs> so now I'm going to try to find a second below it. And I'm going to sing, Mary had a little lamb. So that second note, Mary. Boom. That's a second below B. So that's how you can work on your seconds. All right, let's look at thirds. These two guys, together they sound awesome, creates a harmony. And to pick these out by ear, I like this one. Summertime, right? You know that song, Christian? Summertime and the living is. That's a, that's a third, major third. Summertime. Um, you could also think, oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. That's a song that uses thirds at the beginning as well. So again, you can use that same trick. Pick any note, try to sing one of those songs, and the second note that you sing is the interval. Okay, let's look at fourths. This one's really obvious. Here comes the bride. That one's very helpful for me. Um, also, we wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's going to be stuck in your head now. That's a fourth. And then we have fifths. Lots of songs use this. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Twinkle, twinkle, or are you going to? Those are fifths. So again, you could pick any note and then sing one of those songs. Twinkle, twinkle. Oh, that's terribly high. That was horrible. But you get, you get the idea. You don't have to be a singer to train your ear. Um, it's just a way that you can help to connect what you're hearing in the space between the notes to what's actually happening on the piano. So we can keep going. Let's do a sixth. That is not a sixth. Let's try that again. Let's do a sixth. <laughs> this one is my body lies over the... Hey, and let's just back up a minute. I played something that was not a sixth, and it's, I knew, not because of my hand placement, I knew because my ears told me. That's because I've been practicing my intervals for a lot of years. So this is just a beautiful way to explain to you the bonus of training your ear is that you will begin to learn when something is right or wrong. And you can apply these to sheet music when you can memorize how they look in notation. You can see them and play them really quickly, which is so helpful. It's going to make you a faster sight reader. So there are multiple reasons to train your ear this way and learn your intervals. So yes, my body lies over the, or it came upon. I'm busting out the Christmas songs today. And then we have the seven. That's the crunchy one. This one's hard to find examples for. Um, but Nora Jones, I uh, don't know why. I waited till I saw the sun. That's the seventh. How I used to find um, sevenths was I'd sing the octave. La, la. And then I'd just go down a note. La. And there it is. 
you can go at it that way if you want. And then the eighth, the octave. This one, also one of my favorites. Somewhere, somewhere over the rainbow. So that will help you find an octave. So those are the, we, we're, we stuck with simple intervals today. We stuck with major second, major third, we stuck with a fourth, which is technically called a perfect fourth, a perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and then the octave. So start there. So practice connecting famous songs, or songs you are aware of, or songs that you know, to each of these intervals and see if you can memorize what goes with what. Um, then practice picking a note on the keyboard or the piano and then singing the first part of that song to see if you can find the interval that you are looking for. You can play intervals, say their names out loud. That's another helpful trick. But I find that connecting popular songs to the space between notes is just, it's a tried and true way of training your Ear. Super helpful. Um, okay, so I give my my examples, songs that I feel familiar with that match these intervals, but maybe you have your own. Um, and if you do, comment below, let me know what they are, and happy practicing.